So if you think about the way people consume media today, it's very different uh, than it was even just a few years ago. Uh, it's very fragmented. There's lots of different services available for people to pick and choose from. And there's certainly been an explosion of new services over the last year or so. And really the lines between what has traditionally been referred to as television or digital are becoming increasingly blurred. So if you are an advertiser and you're trying to uh, reach your consumer in the most effective way possible, you really need insight that spans across all platforms where a consumer can be reached, not so much looking at data in the silos uh, of the past. So really what, what we envision as part of Nielsen One is a cross-media solution that will allow people to make bigger, bigger and better decisions uh, based on a holistic view of the consumer and, and really understanding the value inherently of each individual platform, but equally as important understanding how they all come together uh, to, to deliver hopefully on what uh, the ROI uh, is intended to be for that particular campaign. So what are the elements, uh, the panel will be one, but what are the elements of Nielsen One and how will, what will it look like? Sure, sure. So in terms of the inputs to measurement, it really will be a combination of big data assets uh, combined with our panel. So if you think about uh, the data acquisitions that Nielsen has announced over the last many months, it really is all about growing the coverage and granularity of that which we can measure. So we are ingesting as an example, uh, uh, return path data from set-top boxes, ACR data from smart TVs covering about 100 million devices, as well as ingesting a census level data from different services uh, in the CTV space. But all of that data by definition wasn't built inherently for measurement. And really what we're able to do uh, with the Nielsen panel is calibrate and adjust that data to correct for any biases, any inefficiencies, and also fill in the blanks for that which those big data sets can't naturally measure. So if you think about just a general, for instance, if I'm pulling in data from a set-top box, that can tell me a lot about the tuning that happens in that particular home using that device, but it wouldn't necessarily tell me anything about over-the-air viewing, which we know from our many years of measurement experience is a little bit of a different profile of a consumer. So the panel is there to help us calibrate and to really fill in the gaps to make sure that the overall measurement we produced, uh, again, is unbiased and complete. So again, if you think about a world today where people are consuming content and ads, therefore, across many, many different devices, it becomes a lot harder to actually plan for that media. And you end up with quite a lot of waste today. And even as a consumer, you probably can think of instances where you've been served the same ad way, way, way too many times. But the challenge in actually managing that frequency and the challenge in eliminating that waste really comes down to the fact that it is very difficult in today's world to really understand your audience across all of those different platforms in a comparable way. And in a way that deduplicates that audience to give you one number that you can trust and buy and sell upon uh, across all of those different platforms. And that's what Nielsen One really aspires to do for the industry is provide that single metric that will help you understand your, your ad campaign or your content as a whole, regardless of where it ha or how it happened to have been consumed. And again, still understanding the details behind that and the value that each individual platform can bring, but it really will allow um, buyers and sellers to be more efficient and more selective in terms of where they choose to deliver their content and their ads. Now, Kim, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, of course we spoke earlier about the panel, the importance of the panel. Um, could you just, explain the differentiator of having the panel sure. and and sort of why that matters and and what panels look like and why they're relevant in this cross-media world. Sure. So the Nielsen panel, just as a little bit of a starting point, um, is a representative panel of all US TV households. So it is designed uh, based on the US census to ensure that we represent every type of home and uh, whether that's the, the way that they receive television service, whether that's age, gender, race, ethnicity, household size, it's, it's very uh, well distributed and well balanced to ensure that we are truly representing the total US. And that allows us to do essentially two things when it comes to the integration of other data sources that, that again, inherently weren't designed for that purpose for measurement. Number one, it provides a source of truth where we can actually look at common devices or common homes between our panel and a third-party data set 
and actually look record by record and say, where do they agree or disagree? So that actually will help us find gaps, deficiencies, limitations in the data sets that we ingest, that we can in turn um, apply uh, cleaning rules, methodology models uh, in order to, to adjust and correct for. So that's, that's sort of the first piece is to really clean and calibrate the data that we receive from other parties. Uh, the second piece of the puzzle is really to fill the gaps. There really is no such thing as 100% census data for everything everywhere. So the beauty of the panel is it allows us to have a representative sample of measuring total consumption within a home. And for things that cannot be measured by the data sets that we have, we can fill in those blanks. And again, the classic example, as I mentioned earlier, is um, over there homes can't really be represented by a set-top box. So uh, having that ability through the panel to be able to, to fill in those blanks is also really critical.